So the question then boils down to the, to, to the thing, how do you construct a molecular switch that is reversible, that can be regulated at any level, uh, and then does the thing that uh, it, it's supposed to do? And so nature has devised a, a very large class of proteins called GTP binding proteins so that comes in two flavors. In the GTP bound state, it's on, and in the GDP bound state, it's off. So the difference between these two states is a single phosphate. And uh, to, to uh, show that this is a very important class of, of, of proteins, you can find more than 38,000 GDP binding proteins, or G proteins as I would like to call them, in uh, about 1,300 genomes by December 2010. So that tells you these are really important molecules found in all kingdoms of life, and some of these proteins are the most highly conserved proteins in, in nature at all. So let me tell you about how these switch, molecular switches work. And I will be talking mostly about RAS-like proteins because these are the ones that we work with and they are sort of the prototype of learning how this, these are regulated. So you start out with a signal that comes, for example, like a growth factor or whatever that hits uh, somehow these G proteins, and I will be talking to you about that later. Uh, and that it uses sort of a series of uh, steps that lead to the protein becoming loaded with GTP, and then it has its downstream effect. And in RAS-like proteins, it works the following way. These nucleotides are usually bound very tightly, picomolar range, such that GDP never comes off by itself, but needs the action of a nucleotide exchange factor, which is called GEF, guanine nucleotide exchange factor, which allows GDP to be released uh, much faster and then allows GTP to bind to the protein. And now it is active. And, and now it can do its effect, but you obviously, since it's a molecular switch, you want it to be switched off again. The way you do that is not the reverse, not the exchange of GTP for GDP, but rather it is the reversible step, the, the, the GTPase hydrolysis. So GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP and PI, and there's another protein that stimulates that reaction because it is intrinsically very slow and becomes stimulated by a protein called GTPase activating protein, or GAP. And I will be talking about that, obviously, in great detail in my second seminar. Because that is where you see a lot of diseases uh, being due to inability to hydrolyze GTP. So the downstream effector is then something that is sort of mediates the biological effect. An effector is a molecule that recognizes specifically only the active GTP bound form and not the inactive GDP bound form. So uh, just to make you familiar with the way this, this thing can sort of work, uh, since this, uh, this, the cycle of, of GDP to GTP con uh, is, is regulated by KDIS, the, the, the dissociation for GDP, uh, or is regulated by the GTPase reaction, which is K cut or K off, uh, you can see that the signal can do either increase K dis or it can decrease K off. And in both cases, you get an increase in the effect, in the bio biological effect. Because the, the, the effect is finally determined, really, by uh, the GAF reaction or the GAP reaction. And you can sort of even quantify this and saying that the amount of biological effect that is have coming out of this system is directly proportional to K on, to the in, in, in introduction of GTP, or is inversely proportional to K off, to the GTPase reaction. So if you make K this faster, you get more GTP bound protein, or if you, if you make the, the gap reaction uh, slower, you also have an increase in GGTP.